Okay, we're back here live at EMC World, and this is day two of our exclusive three-day coverage of Silicon Angles The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the event, extract the ceiling from the noise. I'm, I'm joined by my co-host in this segment, Stu Miniman of Wikibon.org, and our guest is Kent Christensen from DataLink. Kent, welcome to The Cube. Thank you, thanks for having me. Top of the morning here on day two, and this is just day two, we've <laughs> got another day to go. Pat Kelsinger coming on, Joe Tucci had the keynote, uh, Paul Moritz, obviously uh, EMC's proud, and to say we're doing things a little bit differently, we've got four brands, data fabric, they're creating a lot of opportunities. So talk about data link and what you guys are doing and delivering the cloud because the mission's still the same, the market's changing, the dynamics are changing. We saw software-defined networking hit the scene last year. Yep. That's changing a lot of stuff. That's data fabric with big data. The security equation still is important. Uh, all those things in play, you're out there on the front lines. Talk about uh, data link and, and some of the things that you guys have with experience in the cloud across the board. Well, I think one of the themes you see when uh, EMC's mentioned a number of times, 10 years ago they were a storage company, as were we. We've had to go through this transformation ourselves and, and become a full data services provider, even a cloud services provider, if you would, to our customers. Um, the, the buzzword or the theme around transformation we see is very real. They uh, realize now more than ever that IT organizations need to go through transformation and our role is to help them do that. Best of breed technologies, people processes, and help them meet their business needs. It's always been our role, it's just much more acute these days. What's your take about uh, EMC World this year? Now we're day two, we're getting, starting to see some of the, the onion get peeled back a little bit. Yesterday was a great preview, we had some amazing guests on theCUBE. Um, but what's your take on, on EMC World here today? Obviously you're seeing you know, the arrow you know, in the keynote that's been putting a lot of wood behind many arrows. Yep. What's your take? And we'll share with the folks out there who aren't here on the ground, what, what the vibe is here, and what the major trends that they're really uh, water skiing behind. Well, it's a huge conference, one of the biggies for us, certainly. Uh, I think 15,000 plus people here. Uh, a lot of technology flying at you. A lot of it is things that are coming down the road. So as we look at things like Pivotal um, and, and some of those other initiatives, those are things that, that we're getting ready for. If we step back and look at cloud, those are things that we've been doing and executing on over the last couple of years and looking at how those have proved. So, a lot of information uh, to take in. So, so, so Kent, uh, you know, this, this is part of our spotlight on looking at kind of converged infrastructure for the mid-market and SMB. Right. So when, as we're looking at kind of the cloud marketplace here, talk to us a little bit about you know, what is the, your mid-market customers and going down to the SMB, you know, what does cloud mean to them and, and how does convergence fit into that? Yeah, that's really where the rubber hits the road. So um, you know, we've seen in our enterprise customers the urgency to go through the transformation. And in the large customer, they might have a very sophisticated IT staff and we'll play a role to help them um, go through that transformation. But they typically have had the burden of putting together architectures themselves. As we go down into our mid-market and commercial customers, they've really have challenged us and almost demanded that we help them do this, that we lead this transformation with them. They recognize they don't have the skills across servers, networking, and storage, and clearly, um, converging those solutions into unified architectures is something that, that a lot of organizations are really seeing the value of. All right, so uh, you know, how has that kind of VSpecs rollout uh, you know, been in your, in your, your perspective? You know, what, what's customer adoption and uh, what's your experience been? Well, VSpecs was great. It was announced, I guess, about a year ago. Um, and you know, we had kind of been working with a lot of customers without being able to call it VSpecs, uh, where we were helping them put EMC storage and VMware and Cisco together in solutions. Uh, VSpecs came out and really gave us a lot of assistance. A, by branding it and saying we can call it something, so the work you're doing with this customer um, is a VSpecs architecture, and then putting a lot of resources behind it. So the validated designs um, that they've done, both the EMC with the backup and the Cisco validated designs are a great starting point. Somebody who says, hey, I'm looking to roll out desktop or I'm looking to roll out private cloud, they don't have to start from scratch. They can go in and say, hey, there's all these resources that have been put into this design. Datalink, you know, we're depending on you to go deliver it, which is great. Um, that show, you know, that allows us to add that value, not just to the customer, but to the EMC channel. And they realize that, hey, we've got this. We've got integrating these things together, design, delivery, support, um, and aligned with the customer. So it's really, really been, um, for us, a really good thing. 
Okay, so so one one of the the, the values of uh, kind of the the reference architecture of Vspex Ring is that flexibility. Can you walk us through, you know, how many different solutions are are you only selling EMC with Cisco and VMware, or you know, what what do you offer? No, that's a great point. So one of the things Vspex did that that wasn't in the portfolio prior to this to give you the flexibility, and and we report on these publicly. Um, many customers are ready to say, hey, I'm going to go through this transformational flash of white light and bring in this new architecture and drop it in and we're going to port stuff to it. Many others though, maybe at least half, need to migrate into it. They need to use existing processes and resources and they can't just turn a light switch overnight. So they may have a, another vendor's servers. Um, do I have to switch server vendors in order to get most of the value that I would get out of a vSpecs architecture? No, if it's an x86 server, we'll show you the pros and cons of that versus something else, but we can leverage that. So uh, between wanting to migrate in it and use existing assets, vSpecs provides that flexibility to be able to do that. Okay, I'm wondering if you can tell us, is, is this more than just kind of simplifying a virtual deployment or are we really getting to more of a cloud model in, in a private cloud in, environment? We think more and more we're truly delivering private cloud models aligned to the customer's business. So um, they may not do that all on one day, but we're, we're putting out essentially a blueprint of how to get there. A lot of times that starts with something like a vSpecs architecture. I always look at that as the foundation <coughs> for the cloud. And then they start defining the services they want to deliver, the things that they're repeating. We use things like you know, CIAC and, and other tools to help orchestrate and automate that vSpec solution and then align that with their particular customer environment, um, which takes you from, I think in virtualization, we went and said, if I deploy virtualization properly, I will save money. And, if, and we have kind of crossed the line to say, if I deploy private cloud properly, we will make more money. We will do things more rapidly, we'll bring on customers more quickly, we'll end up generating more money for the organization, and that's pretty exciting. Kent, I want to ask you, because obviously the cloud journey has been one of those things that EMC's been talking about for a while, since we've been doing theCUBE. Um, there are a lot of different paths to the cloud, mm -hmm. um, with vSpecs in particular. What are you guys seeing out there for the use cases? I mean, because there's different categories of customer bases, from SMB, small, medium-sized businesses, to large, growing companies. Absolutely. I mean, what, what are the couple paths that people take? in your experience? You know, from the EMC pass to the cloud, get it all at once in a unified solution, vSpecs being kind of the middle, build it yourself, um, you know, so people are, are taking all of those paths. Um, but you're right, there are, uh, one of the things that we say about cloud is I can't come down and, and dictate to you what your cloud should look like. I need to listen to you about your business and understand. Um, so examples that we brought in a customer last year, um, their environment was, um, you know, they were providing services internally and processing and things like that, and they needed DR, um, and they were going to identify things, especially in their app dev group, that they wanted cloud services on. Another customer that's in here th this year is a service provider. They're providing services to their customers that happen to be hospitals, and they needed, you know, the same um, discipline in their back end, they see, needed the same automation, uh, the same ability to deliver consistent services, et cetera, to their customers. Uh, so two different examples. If I were to stereotype one thing that a lot of people are getting a lot of traction on um, is dealing with the app dev group. So in most organizations you can go in and they're trying to get their arms around transformation and you say, well just think about the relationship between yourselves and your app dev group they might be going out and creating their own little shadow IT organizations and trying to figure out what to do. If you really understand the services they're needing, there's an opportunity to real near term provide value to them, to provide value to the organization, and that's a real common um, opportunity. How are they How are they managing that? Because obviously that's happening. We know a little bit of shadow IT is oh, yeah. going on. In some cases there's more than others, and obviously it's not endorsed officially, um, but it is tolerated in the sense of don't put anything sensitive out there. When you talk to customers and, and people, they're just trying to solve a problem, right? They're really trying to solve a business problem, so how do you have those conversations? I mean, walk us through the day in the life of that, that kind of conversation. Well, I think to help, so I agree with that. I think the C-level is going in and saying, well, I'm going to tolerate this because these guys, let's say the app dev people, are generating revenue, and whatever it takes to get their job done more quickly, there's an urgency to take advantage of cloud, to help it drive the bottom line, uh, and things like that. The IT organization kind of sees that happening and they become compliance officers and they realize that data is getting out in places that aren't, there's not proper um, discipline around this and, um, and there's a gap right now. The gap is that if I don't deliver a service that meets their needs, 
they're going to continue to do this. And so that's the opportunity to talk to really both sides. And a lot of times you have both teams in the room and you say, we understand what you're looking for to get your job more quickly. Uh, we understand the gap between if it takes four weeks or even four days to get that. What if we could get that in four hours? customized to what you need, as opposed to going out and buying a, a, a generalized service. We heard from Joe Tucci and Paul Moritz here on day two of the keynotes, and you know, they're making a lot of references to Google, right? Google scale, um, they mentioned Google file system, you know, a lot of the, you know, under the, under the hood, yep. kind of details that a hyperscale company will do. Yeah. Now, not everyone's going to build their own cloud. Um, they kind of said people want to build their own clouds. Yeah, on the high end, if you're an absolute you know, financial institution, you need to control everything, maybe you'll vertically integrate like a Google, but the majority of the market's not going to do that. They're going to want to customize some cloud. Yep. So how does that affect, uh, I mean, that's generally accepted. One, do you agree? If you don't, let's talk about that. But if you do, how does a customer get their arms around that? Like, okay, Shadow IT validates the approach of development. Now I got to rein that in and I don't want to build my own cloud. I want to do some things, build, but not build a full-scale cloud. Right, so I think there's maybe two different challenges there. One of them is the Google scale and the big data that we just talked about with the Pivotal Initiative, where how do I handle 30 terabytes of data streaming at me? Um, and I think how we do that and commercial like that is TBD. A lot of that is custom work within the organization, within the marketing department to mine their data. As far as getting the value of cloud within the organization, they've been doing the right things. They've been virtualizing most of that with VMware. They've got storage virtualization. They've got a networking team. We just need to kind of bring them together and break down some of the political barriers so that they can focus on delivering the service. So it's not a major overhaul, it's a tweak. It is, it is a journey. It is a journey and they're most likely already on that path and we're just like saying, okay, Nudge here's where it can be you know, out here six months or three months or a year and let's just make sure that we're focused on delivering that value yeah. and focus on delivering that value to the organization. Ken, uh, if we could drill in a second. You talk about kind of the silos. <laughs> when I look at convergence, one of the biggest challenges, uh, you know, technology and organizational are tough, but the go-to-market. Uh, if you look at some of the solutions out there in the market, there's a little bit of a struggle as to, you know, how do we work with the channel on this? Uh, right. Of course, you know, you've lived this. So, you know, EMC is not listening right now. So, you know, tell us, what are they doing good and, and what do they need to do better? Well, I think, um, you know, EMC has announced themselves where they had what they called the storage Nazi and it was a very direct model, let's say 10 years ago. Um, and what they've done recently with things like VSpecs is they've said, you know what, we don't need to, to control everything. We don't need to have co complete control over the account and we recognize that the partner adds value. So VSpec really said, we're going to depend on the partner add value. We're, we're really going to supply the storage and we're going to end the reference architectures, and we're going to depend on the partner ultimately to add in the networking and configure it to the customer's environment and and and, and the virtualization and things like that. Uh, and that's really a huge olive branch to make sure that 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 um, that is a ch very channel friendly approach. Yeah. So does DataLink take advantage of kind of the co-branding uh, effort of VSpecs? Oh, absolutely. It was you know I think you know I was talking to Gil. Uh, from VSpecs yesterday, and probably the number one thing the EMC can continue to do is push that brand and, and continue to do what they're doing in reference architectures, et cetera. But that brand helps us go and have a very quick conversation with a customer that says, how about a VSpecs architecture? This is what it looks like. And we get from piece parts, which is the old school, um, you know, if EMC was having a campaign on storage and Cisco was having a campaign on networking and, and now servers, to bringing that all together, and, and that's just a rallying point. The, the brand of VSpecs helps us rally around the solution and move further down the road. Right. So if we look at kind of that SMB and mid-market space, is most of the competition for VSpecs still kind of the build your own, or are some of the startups and some of the uh, other big vendors that are getting in that space, uh, like you know Dell, I think of, uh, done and done in the mid-market, and yep. NetApp uh, competing against uh, what VSpecs is doing in your in your experience? I think in the enterprise, there's a uh, feeling that I have to own this architecture and I've got a large staff and I got multiple people that I cloud in their title, et cetera. And so there's a little bit more of build your own, but I see that breaking down very rapidly and them starting to look at converge. I think in the mid market, you have more of an immediate realization that, boy, I could really use help. And, and we see this day after day that as we bring a customer in and we show them, you know, this is what you could be doing and here's what you have and here's how we can help you get that. They start to realize that, wow, I was trying to deal with multiple partners. I was trying to deal with this guy on Monday and this guy on Tuesday and put this together. And I realize, and this is where the value of vSpecs helps an organization like us where we can put the whole solution together. Um, 
that, that they see the value and we can deliver that value and we've invested in that. Um, some of the challenge, you know, we talked about silos and, and, and change and transformation and it's hard. The challenge is that might change something they did. They might have been buying VMware from a server provider in the past. Maybe it was Dell. And they realized, well, Dell's not going to lead me on my journey to the cloud. They're just going to sell me ESX. I need somebody that kind of, you know, can put together the complete solution and architecture for my organization and help me get there. So, you know, that's a challenge for, it's been a challenge for us to grow. I think it's been a challenge for the different partners to recognize that, and certainly for the customers to break down you know, their organizational barriers. Ken, my final question, because we get, we're getting wrapped up on time here, but uh, great great content. Um, EMC has a reputation with Channel. Obviously, they has historically had a very aggressive sales force, and they've had you know, a little bit of rub in with some of the Channel. Uh, we had the Channel guys on earlier, and this, it, the fog is clearing, and, and they have a good sense of how they're segmenting their channel with direct on their named accounts, and then obviously their channel partners. So, what is your experience with the channel um, and with EMC? What do, what's your report card? How would you how would you talk to the folks out there to kind of give them a? I always say the new Polaroid picture, but to, to be modern, I'll say a new Instagram photo of the of the EMC channel. Well, huge progress, right? Um, now, I think they announced fifty percent of our. Um, sales go through this channel moving towards 60%. That's huge improvement over you know, three, four, five years ago. V-Specs, huge improvement over, hey, I'm going to actually bring you into my account and we're going to be dependent on you to be delivering this complete package of services while I'm just supplying uh, uh, storage. So is the controlling EMC, um, that's huge. Um, and the trust, they got to have trust, joint sales calls, good trust relationship. Absolutely, so I think you know we've been very much embraced as we come into the various offices and say, here's what we can do with V-Specs, we can design, we can deliver, we can support, we can manage that. They're like, great, you know, that's a yeah. unique partner uh, experience and we can leverage that. Um, can we do more? Absolutely, right? I always say the, 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 the formula is very simple on the channel. Pass, shoot, score. No conflict, are people making money? and are you accelerating growth? Right. And that, you know, and, and more margin for the, for the partners. And ultimately, you know, if we can jointly have our customers realize this transformation, when they go through this, they're customers for a long time, because we've done yeah. a very good thing for them. Okay, we're here with Ken Christensen with uh, Data Link. We'll be right back. This is the Silicon Angle, the Cube Spotlight segment here. We'll be right back with more coverage from day two. Just kicking off day two here inside the Cube. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman. We'll be right back with our next guest. <laughs>